Oh, he's going for free and chat all stuff. Excuse me, let's develop the note. Looks like we've got a thinker here. All right, good stuff. Okay, so probably envisaging this, so we may as well push here. I'd like to say this is a kind of an unusual opening from uh, Black. I don't really see it that often. I'm really plumping to just disturb the center. I'm, I'm actually gonna, yeah. See, if we go here, his pawn can take. Or if we go there, his bishop can take the knight. But then we take the pawn. But no, we won't do that because we want to take the um, bishop first. So we take the bishop. We're on his rook, but his queen's protecting. So now this pawn is here, it's up. His pawn takes. Then if we take back, then his knight gets an extra pawn. So that's where we'd lose out. So that's why holding back on that is key. So I'm actually gonna press here. Obviously the pawn is going to drop, which is hopefully a benefit to us because it's blocking his bishop out of the picture for a minute. So we can bring the bishop back. Oh, he's done it as well. Okay, just bring the bishop back. Get ready for castling. The hotline is blasting over there. It's going for another Fianchetto. Can't stand Fianchetto. Let's castle here. So we're definitely not definitely not looking at this one. We we we'd lose out. His pawn can take pawn takes then the knight takes and he's got the bishop there so we're not doing that we could push this pawn onto here to see what he does he may just push past if he does take then we can take um, quite nicely so it might be that we go that way I think that's what I'm going to do I'm going to go this way it seems a little bit more friendly for us maybe we should have left it because the bishop is behind the pawn so it's kind of not in the game so we're kind of inviting it back in the game in a sense but I'm trying to look to get a better position on the board so okay so he's not actually wanting to open up the bishop at all so what is his plan if we bring the bishop here facing off this pawn he does have this but then also it's keeping our king company isn't it it's just he's going to double our pawns by taking the knight here. Okay, so he's got like 50 million pieces on there. He's really training down here, isn't he? Right, don't need to panic about stuff that ain't happening. Don't mind doubling the pawns. So let's just bring the bishop here. It's um, targeting through to the queen, a higher piece. It almost looks like we're trying to put pieces here to attack this area. I don't know if that's going to come off for us because we would have to jostle a bit. So he's playing a bit of lazy man's chess at the minute. Everything's just on the back waiting for us to overextend. Maybe we need to just sit back a little bit now and really take a look at what is actually happening. Queenside castling probably. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, it's just developing the knight out here, attacking the pawn. Mm hmm. It's not doing any of that. Get my queen off the back. Can't really attack there. He's got his knight and he's got his rook, etc. on there. Knight up. No. Get fought. No credence. Knights. One. Two. Three. Four. 
that's a definite no no right positioning positioning rook opposite the queen even though it, there's nothing major going on yeah rook opposite the queen if in any event of a major kickoff we've got the rook facing the queen I'm trying to avoid over extending <clears throat> probably should have just taken the pawn on thinking about it I need some more water. So these types of games are really strange and odd in terms of it's just kind of like keeping tension and the person that makes the break I think yeah so this person definitely is not wanting to take any piece off the board I'm plumping for just taking here and it's not an impatience thing it's just I think well somebody needs to do something and if he's getting all his little pawns set up in, in position then we may lose out tempo wise so I'm actually going to take the pawn let's start the ball rolling okay then I'm going to attack the queen then my queen can come here but before I get into narration mode and go my queen can go there it can because it's attacking the rook <clears throat> Rook then comes here. <coughs> Excuse me, then he's attacking this pawn. If we take with the pawn, the pawn's elevated up the board. Hmm. Okay, let's take with the queen <coughs> if he forgets himself and we can take the rook off the board. But obviously, it's coming here. Yep, so it's gone there. Do have a nice spot, but nothing else supporting that. Oh no, and they've resigned. They've resigned. I don't think it was an absolute outwilling thing because obviously the bishop is looking to come here and take this pawn because the rook is no longer supporting. And it's not the end of the game, but it's potentially the start of us gaining an advantage interesting let's have a look at the analysis I think it's probably going to suggest that bishop taking the pawn uh, yep yeah, okay yeah bishop takes a6 so that's pretty straightforward so we worked I think okay nice steady pace in this game because we understood what the opponent was attempting to do which was basically they're just um, fighting from the back they're wanting to keep tension and they're wanting us to overextend and once we realized this then we could really look to see where where the pawn break type situations are that we can kind of manage around the center of the ball around the center of the ball because you know they're loving having these pawns here waiting for the end game to get these pushed down and start causing havoc but if we can work around the edge of the board um, most times you know I can't speak for every chess player I'm just speaking for the games that I've noticed in my games um, they try and champion these center pawns as much as possible and all their energy is around there so what we attempt to do is work around the edges and it seems to work out okay for us it's more favorable so we brought the rook across uh, computer's not happy with that but we're happy with that and then we take the pawn off so we wanted to start some type of activity so then we attack the queen opening up space attacking the rook but obviously then the bishop can take here and that's the start of the snowball and it's only plus 0.7 that's neither here nor there really uh, we were ready for a long a long play and that's a 10 minute game but a long version of this you know 
we were looking at going to the end game because of the way the opponent was playing. Key thing to note, the king hasn't even got castles yet. You know, so there's probably preparations that needed to take place there. And it's saying like the knight take attacking the queen because we're on their rook. But we'd have to make some sort of movements to try and strength it out a bit. So yeah, all in all, that was pretty interesting. So I think we said three anonymous games we're playing, so we'll we'll jump straight in onto the third one. 